Hi, I'm Chap Bettis, author of The Disciple Making Parent, and this is my audio blog, where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be thinking about principles of discipline from Hebrews 12. You know, as a parent and pastor, I love seeing when someone I teach lights up with understanding. This past Saturday, I taught my Parenting with Confidence seminar and saw that light bulb moment happen when we talked about discipline. Specifically, we talked about the reason we discipline. As a parent, it can be difficult to impose pain on the ones we love. But our chastisement is rooted in the nature of God. We learn to deal with our children by looking at how the perfect father loves his. Well, in The Disciple-Making Parent, I talk about why we discipline from a discipleship point of view. But in this post, I want to look at a more specific scriptural basis for discipline. And that is that the Father disciplines us. Ultimately, we discipline because the Father disciplines us. We understand how to relate to our child by looking at our Heavenly Father. God created the earthly relationship to understand the Heavenly One, not the other way around. So our discipline of our children is rooted in the perfect character of God. Well, let's look at Hebrews 12, 6-11 for some clues on heavenly and earthly discipline. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we've had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. That's God's word. That's Hebrews 12, 6 to 11. As a young father seeking God's wisdom, this passage was extremely helpful to me. What are some principles that fall from this passage? Number one, discipline is from God. The writer talks about the discipline of the Lord. The Lord disciplines us. We are like him when we discipline. It's an outworking of his love towards us. This is an action of God towards his people. So discipline is from God. Number two, discipline is an act of love. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves. He is love. And yet he disciplines us because he loves Proverbs tells us that to not discipline is to hate. The motive is love. Jesus said, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. That's found in Revelation 3.19. So if a parent says, I love my child too much to discipline him, scripture would tell us actually you're hating him and loving yourself. So number two, discipline is an act of love. Number three, discipline starts with the father's. The writer says, besides this, we've had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Fathers, we should take the lead in disciplining. And that agrees with Ephesians 6, 4, where where fathers are commanded to bring up their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. So number three, discipline starts with the fathers. Number four, discipline results in respect towards parents. The writer says, and we respected them. So we've had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Proper discipline results in respect, not alienation. There's a reason God gives us little children. When they disobey our commands, they know there should be a consequence. When there is no consequence, they start to lose respect for us. It's similar to the classroom teacher that can't control his or her class. There's no respect for the teacher. Too many parents want their children to like them. 
Our children will like us when they're adults if they respect us when they're children. So number four, discipline results in respect towards parents. Number five, our discipline is for a short time. The writer says, for they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. Believe it or not, you will not always be correcting your children. As a father of adult children, I can tell you, it does come to an end. In the broad span of their life, our discipline really is only for a short time. Number five, our discipline is for a short time. Number six, it's imperfect. Our discipline is imperfect. For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. What a sweet relief this verse is. As it seemed best to them. That means that my discipline will be imperfect and they will survive. And that, that's not to endorse uninformed thinking. Parenting with confidence, the material that this comes from and led to, does help here. Nevertheless, I only have to do my best. I should not hold back out of fear of messing up my child. Remember, they come messed up already. As a dad, I know I did not discipline perfectly, but my children survived. Loving, thoughtful discipline will not always be executed perfectly. But in a house where there is love and affection, our children will survive our mistakes. Number six, our discipline is imperfect. Number seven, discipline is painful. The writer says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. Now we come to the foundational verse. Discipline is painful. The pain of the discipline we impose should be more than the pleasure of disobedience. It's hard to inflict negative consequences on our children, but it's necessary. God, our loving Heavenly Father, has a plan for our lives this year that includes pain. One reason he brings pain into your life is for your growth. So number seven, discipline is painful. Number eight, discipline results in righteousness and peace. The writer says, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. Though it may not seem like it, discipline actually brings the fruit of peace and practical righteousness or uprightness, we might say. Where there's not self-control, there's a lack of peace. The home is filled with with conflict and lack of order. Where there is self-control, there is peace in the home, peace in the heart, and godliness. So number eight, discipline results in righteousness and peace. Number nine, discipline has the purpose of training. The writer says, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. Training is not words. Training is action with teeth, with consequences. The final step in righteousness is training. You can see that in 2 Timothy 3, 16. We hope and want our children to have habits of godliness. So number nine, discipline has the purpose of training. And number 10, discipline is heart-oriented. The writer says, my son... Do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. And then he talks about for those who've been trained by it. This observation might surprise you, but the writer aims his comments at the heart of the one being disciplined. You see, one can accept discipline and be trained by it, or one can refuse to learn from it. Proverbs calls that refusal to learn the actions of a fool. Similarly, as parents, we want to aim not just at behavior, But at the heart, we are hoping for and pleading for a heartfelt orientation towards wisdom and obedience. So number 10, discipline is heart oriented. When we think about disciplining our children, our primary text is not Proverbs, but the New Testament. When combining Ephesians 6, 4 and Hebrews 12, 6 and following, we see that our parenting flows out of the character of God. We parent like he does. The world now sees discipline as abusive. Scripture and experience would argue that loving, careful, and proper discipline brings about the fruitful peace of righteousness. Well, thank you for listening to the Disciple Making Parent audio blog. This article is found in the material of our video course, Parenting with Confidence. It's our video-driven study 
on the biblical foundations of parenting in a chaotic world. It's specifically aimed at parents of young children. You can find more information on our website or at ParentingWithConfidenceStudy.com. Thanks for listening.